In our One Health series, we've been trying to understand how antibiotic resistance affects us and our farms. We're trying to reduce our antibiotic usage. One way we can do this is vaccination. In this video, we're going to understand top tips around vaccinations and why they help reduce antibiotic usage in our farms. In front of me is just some of the vaccines we can use on farm. Vaccines work by stimulating the immune system. It's critical we use them correctly and get the best results. So here are some of our top tips for vaccination. I'm here in a veterinary practice in County Offaly. One of the key parts of using vaccines correctly is getting your vet involved. These are prescription medicines often, and getting your vet to tell you what vaccines you need in your farm, based on some diagnostics, some risk, and about timings, how you administer them. They understand the risks of your farm, and they're the best person to look for advice when we think about vaccination. When we use vaccines, they create a, an immunity or a stimulate this memory in our immune systems. In animals' immune systems, they do the same. It's really critical that we get the timing right. We create this memory before the risk of the disease. If you look at pneumonia in cattle as a classic example, particularly our weaning and housing time, it's critical we get the vaccines in to stimulate that immunity so when they do face the challenge, that they're ready for it. All vaccines are the same. We must time them correctly so we stimulate that maximum amount of immunity for the risk period. Really important component of vaccination is that we store them correctly. Vaccines are expensive and to work properly they need to be stored correctly. You can see all these vaccines in the fridge here. They come into your veterinary practice refrigerated, they go out to your farm, you need to keep them in the fridge, have a fridge that's working, have the right temperature and check it because if these vaccines are in the, at the wrong temperature, they get deactivated. And you know, we really need to think about how we store vaccines. The next tip for vaccination is to understand each vaccine or whatever vaccine you use will have a leaflet that contains vital information. This information must be read. It's one of my top tips. It'll tell you exactly about dose rates. It'll tell you about adverse reactions if you get self-injections. It'll tell you where the vaccine is to be administered. That's key. How much, by what route. This simple information that you have in your leaflet must be read. If we go to the trouble of purchasing, buying vaccines, using them and storing them, please read the label. Your vet will have explained to you, but always reinforce that knowledge with just a simple read of some of the top tips that are in your leaflet. One key tip with vaccination is to get the best result, that immunological memory, giving vaccines, to, whether it's your dog or your cattle or ourselves, to healthy animals. Vaccines work best when we give them to healthy animals before the risk period. There's a lot of confusion when we talk about vaccines, live vaccines versus dead vaccines. In very simple terms, live vaccines often will contain a small amount of the adjuvant or pathogen we're trying to vaccinate against. It'll be live. The dead vaccine will contain a dead antigen that we're trying to vaccinate against. In very simple terms, live vaccines tend to work quicker. Dead vaccines tend to require two shots as primary courses. And I suppose really, if you're confused about live versus dead and what works better, each farm will have different requirements Requirements. These are uh, different pneumonia vaccines and it's important again to have that conversation with your vet about which vaccine actually is the best choice for your animals and your farm in the situation that your animals might be in. So live versus dead, while it confuses people, we must understand they're slightly different and have different applications on your farm at different times of the year. When we're deciding what vaccines to use, we must incorporate some science. We must look at what risks are on our farm, what potential diseases are there. We can only do that by looking at some diagnostics, whether it be milk samples in your dairy farm, blood samples in your sheep or to cattle, and maybe looking at it occasionally if we lose animals post-mortems, finding out why. These diagnostics lead us to making better decisions and really making a difference with our vaccines. When we have our vaccine and we're going to use it on animals, it's really, really important to use it by the correct route. So as I said, reading the label, you'll know which route, whether it's subcutaneous or into the muscle. Get it right and use clean needles. Vaccines are expensive, we need them to work correctly. So use them correctly. Take that time to make sure you're putting that vaccine where it's supposed to go. So there are some top tips on vaccines. But remember, they're not silver bullets. You can't forget about good husbandry, management, hygiene and nutrition. But they do play a role in the antibiotic resistance challenge. They do play a role in one health. They stimulate immunity when we use them correctly, when, they timed, when we time them properly. Use your vet to make better decisions about vaccines. Think about diagnostics. What risks on your farm can vaccines help against? Using vaccines correctly can reduce antibiotic usage, and that's what this One Health message is all about.